Hey everybody, it's Captain Kyle and I'm here with the Deadly Duel 2-Pack. Yes, it is the Deadly Duel 2-Pack that features the Autobot Javelin and the Ascenticon Cascade, whatever an Ascenticon is. Doesn't sound like a good thing because it's got Khan at the end, but it's a very cool 2-Pack. Harkening back to the early days of Cybertron. And I'm going to go through these two female Transformer warriors and see if it's cool for your collection. Be right back. So I do want to draw your attention to the box. It's a very cool looking box. It shows the two figures. Very nice artwork on the front there with the nice uh, kind of verses and a flash symbol. Okay, well, a lightning bolt. And on the back it shows them the actual toys in their various modes. Now what's interesting about this box is the way it opens. It's actually did not come sealed, which is odd. And you have to open it like this, like like you're opening up and showing this is the ransom money that you want, right? This is it, here you go. Okay, well, it's got, you know, two suspicious packages in there. So that's what it looks like inside it. I have the instructions here. I knew I would find this little fucking thing. And once you do that, you can take out this part so it's opening up again, and then those things can flap out. And then you have these smaller packages, which are accessories and never illegal substances, you know. I do have a cigarette case from Hasbro, so, well, it's an officially licensed Hasbro thing. I use it for uh, business cards, but still, Transformer cigarette case, that's weird. So we'll put this very nice box aside and see what are in these little packages. Yes, we have paper. I mean, they are saving some of the environment by not using plastic, but it looks like the amount of treats they're killing is amazing. So here we have the Senate Guard, Autobot Javelin, in her bot mode, including roller skates. She's in one of the packages, so I was expecting possibly vehicle modes, but I'm guessing that the Ascenticon is also in her robot mode. Now these both look like they're obviously retooled, recolored molds from previous. Reminds me a lot of the female Autobots, this Ascenticon. And let's check out these little packets, because they got stuff in them. All right, so this looks like it puts together into like a huge rifle type thing. It's got posts and such. So it's these three pieces, and it looks like they assemble into one of their weapons. I'm guessing without looking at the instructions, that it becomes that weapon and goes with our Autobot, Javelin. So she is now armed. And the other one has a whole bunch of pieces. So it's like a rifle in six pieces. So we got all that stuff, which I'm, I can guess how to put it together, but I'm sure there's instructions in here because it has a handle, it has a scope, so I think this Ascenticon ascends to a high place and kills people from a distance. And these two extra pieces are like grenades or something? I mean, Chromia vibes all over the place, but I can actually not uh, recall exactly what I did. It's been a while since I've messed around with that particular toy. Oh, or you can separate it into two weapons for which is kind of cool. But all right, let's take a look first at the Senate Guard. Now let's look at the Ascenticon first. Let's start with the bad guy, because that's kind of a cool thing. So here she is, nice coloration, different from other previous uses of this mold. This has been likely retooled and all that stuff. And just for giggles, there she is with the two weapons. Say hello to my little friends. So she is an Ascenticon, but I don't see a symbol on her. There is an area Looks like it's kind of in the shape of a Decepticon symbol. Well, let's check her out posability wise. So her ankles, she does have ankle rockers starting at the bottom. So you can put her in some dynamic poses. The legs, she bends at the knee, but she's got this kibble on the side here. So it kind of hits into the leg. So it can cause some issues when you're trying to bend the knee, it like rubs. And if you're not careful, pieces pop off. So where did this pop off from? Her crotch. So her underwear came off, basically. So you can try, you can't really put her into a full Jean-Claude Van Damme because as soon as you 
try to do that, and she can't quite reach it anyway. This cover for her, you know, crotch basically comes flying off. So there is that, but she can kind of do some low side kicks, which is what you want to do anyway. You don't want to try to do a side kick too high because, you know, then they duck under and punch in the ball. So, or, you know, whatever female Decepticons have. But still pretty good movement in the legs, bending of the knee, there's a swivel. It's on, there's a ball joint here, but the leg is attached over it. So yeah, you can swivel it all the way around. Nice swiveling. The arms, as I knock off her scope, they could go all the way around, but if you're going straight up or even to the side, you're gonna hit into the back kibble. But it swivels. The fists don't twist, but she's got the swivel there, bends at the elbow. It's not quite, it's just about 90 degrees, 91 degrees, something like that, as the angle here. And her arms can go off to the side. As far as twisting at the waist, well, she's got a little bit of twist here, but again, if you push too much, you know, it's going to up off her bikini bottom. So if I take that off, you can yank off the leg. It can twist more, but she's showing, you know, her nether region. So we should put that back on. Hope I don't get demonetized for showing uh, robot for JJ. Anyway, the head can turn and she's got the kind of like monocle type thing, kind of uh, a cable slash, you know, Transmetal 2 Dinobot type monocle. I suppose she is a sniper. That's pretty clear from the, uh, the scope and the weapon. So she probably assassinates people a lot. Now her wrists actually can bend in. So this sight keeps popping off, but she can hold her weapon like so. And then we can put these back over here as grenades, extensions, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, overall, not a bad robotic figure. I like the deco, the uh, interesting coloration on her. It does almost look like she should have this gun because these pieces match Javelin more. But this is what we got. And yeah, she's a, a nice looking figure. There's the back view. Interesting reuse of this mold. All right, let's take a look at the vehicle mode. And the weapon is, I believe, different than what Chromia and the other female Autobots had. So that's kind of neat. Oh, and she has storage before I start transforming her. She wants to put her weapon on her back so she can climb up a building because she's an Ascenticon. You know, she can store it back here, which is kind of neat. All right. So there she is in vehicle mode. Like I said, very many vibes from other female Autobots, very similar design. I don't think that she can necessarily merge those other ones, but you know, if you want to try, knock yourself out. And of course you can put her weapons on her in her vehicle mode. And you can put these two little pieces that are likely to get lost at some point right on the back there. So you can either shoot behind her or they're boosters or something. But cool vehicle mode. I, obviously Cybertronian, squeaky wheels, doesn't roll that far, on more slides, but still, I like it. And who can't use more female Transformers? Now, I had this theory that why there were female Autobots, but we didn't have, at least in the G1 days, any female Decepticons, because basically when the Quintessons took over and they had the domesticated robots, the domestic servants, as who were, became the Autobots, they made them in male and female forms for marketing purposes. Whereas the Decepticons were mainly military, and for the most part, a lot of the galaxy wanted big, strong, male-appearing robots. However, I always had this great idea that a ship would return to Cybertron filled with Amazonian warrior-style robots who were basically female Decepticons because one client wanted only warrior women and that was what was provided by the Quintessence. But that was my theory. Obviously, in today's military, you can have men and women and it's just some of the universe is sexist. That's all I'm saying. 
So that's why I was figuring there weren't any female Decepticons, but now we have lots of female Decepticons who were formerly male and uh, I guess, you know, identified as female and Skywarp became a woman. And we have the Nemesis who is considered a female Decepticon. So there goes my theory. So maybe the galaxy isn't as sexist as I feared. You go there. All right, so I think I popped her out of position. So I have to pop Javelin back into her proper robot mode before I can really show her to you. So I am having trouble getting this part to stay together. So that's a pain in the ass. I don't know if it's a quality issue or if it's just a me issue, but that is a little bit difficult to do there. But regardless, let's take a look at this Senate guard with a really big rifle. So she can go into a full Jean-Claude Van Damme and has wheels on her ankles so she could, you know, dodge while in that mode. Bends at the knee, can pivot outwards. There's no real leg swivel. There's a little bit because of the ball joint, but there's no real swiveling. And there is a bit of an ankle rocker, but I think that's also part of the transformation. So she can have a wide stance as she fires her massive weapon. Twists at the waist. Again, the chest part keeps wanting to fly forward. But this one does twist at the waist. The arms should be able to go all the way around, except kibble. So that's not necessarily a good thing. But they do pivot, bend at the elbow, straighten out. The hands look like, yes, it's probably part of the transformation, but she can like bend her wrists inward, but the fists themselves don't twist. The head does turn. And I have to say the head is an interesting design. Uh, whoever came up with the design for this character, yeah, it looks like she doesn't have eyes or her eyes are very in insect-like. You know, she looks like she's training to be a Jedi or, you know, she's a really big fan of the movie Blind Fury and wants to be like Rooker Hauer. Just doesn't use her eyes. I don't know. In the comics, is she like unable to see, but she's still a guard? You tell me. The chest is getting annoying, popping out like that. Maybe I will transform her into her vehicle mode and back just to uh, see if I can solve that issue. There's her back look, and she's got these... It looks like a jetpack, so it's kind of not a bad thing there. And, uh, yeah, she's a pretty good figure, other than the chest just wanting to pop out. But that may, again, be me. So apparently you can take these pieces and hide them in here. You can also attach her gun to the back, or you can leave the pieces on and attach the gun to the back. So she can climb after an assassin, you assassin, just because of the rifle, you know, and try to stop her from shooting up whoever. Probably not Senator Ratbat. Just going out on a limb there. But yeah, cool figure overall. And it looks like she also does roller derby because of these wheels. All right. Cool looking figure. Again, not happy about the, uh, the looseness in the chest, but once I transform her, maybe again, like I said, I'll transform her back. And we'll see if uh, he's a little better then. I was right. She does do the roller derby stuff. She's basically uh, an early version of Thrust Afterburn. I know that's only a partial transformation, but, you know, she could potentially balance, you know, like a, he's on like one of those boogie boards. I don't know what they call those things. The uh, They have like one wheel and there's a board. You know what I'm talking about. All right, there she is in this interesting vehicle mode with the... Uh, Wheel in the front actually rolls not too bad for, uh, you know, non-G1 toy. But cool looking. Now, of course, you can take her weapon and you can plug it here, so it's quite intimidating. But it's kind of a neat looking. It's got the, the canopy here for a potential driver, which, you know, they don't need. And it clips together fairly well. I mean, a little bit of shell former-ish, but not bad. I mean, not an RC, you know, that people complain about. But yeah, it's a pretty cool vehicle. You can see it here. You can kind of see, of course, her hands. Those could be like special clamps because she's a guard. And, you know, she could use those to drag somebody back in front of the Senate because they were fuck ups. I don't know. Pretty cool vehicle mode. I think they're both cool vehicles. I am not sure what this is a remold of or if it's a new mold. I have some Transformers that I haven't taken out of the box yet. So this could be a... Uh, repaint of something that I just have somewhere else and haven't taken out, but they're both cool vehicles. It's neat that they're going back and exploring the origins of Cybertron, the early days of the war. 
you know, and bringing out these characters because, you know, again, millions of Transformers and Cybertron, so there's bound to be ones we've never heard of. The Ascenticon, I'm not familiar with the comic books. 99.9% .9 sure these are comic book characters that they've brought to life. It is interesting how a comic book company pays Hasbro money, invents new characters for the comic book that they're paying Hasbro in order for them to be able to produce it. And then Hasbro turns around and takes those characters and makes toys out of them. And I don't think that that comic book company makes any money. So it is interesting. There's also been some uh, BotCon exclusives that uh, the people at BotCon came up with and now they're Hasbro toys. So pretty neat. I am gonna transform this one back quickly into her robot mode just to see if the chest stays any better because that would be nice. It looks like there are posts that are supposed to hold that together. And I think I got it pretty well. There's still gonna be a slight gap, but I think it's unavoidable. And it leads me to believe there probably was a toy that this is based on that actually, you know, in some other line, I could be wrong, but this is kind of telling me that this mold might have been used a few times and uh, might need some repair. But it kind of stays. And it certainly doesn't have the problems of say, I don't know, Dion and Ariel with the uh, amazing falling forearms. But a cool set, I would recommend it. I think they're sold out on Hasbro. I will put some links so you can find it online. You may have to pay the late fee by going to like eBay, but I think it's a neat set and I think it's worth it. So, but while you're mulling these over, why don't you check out over here where I actually do a comparison between a couple different versions of Alita 1. And I hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I like making them, even if sometimes these can be frustrating. But I will see you next time. And as always, have fun and good hunting.